Look at the walls and the little slits. So we're just going along the perimeter of the Abbey at the moment, just seeing it from the outside. Probably seeing it for the first time in the way that many of the wounded soldiers who were arriving here would have seen it. I'm kind of imagining all the ambulances and the chauffeurs, the, the lady chauffeurs driving their mock-up ambulances along this road, arriving at the big entrance. This is Royaumont, a 13th century Cistercian abbey to the north of Paris. At the beginning of World War I, it was home to a revolutionary medical movement, a hospital run entirely by women, determined to prove they had as much to offer as men when it came to the tough business of war medicine. After my experiences as a doctor in Syria, I can really relate to their story. I think there's more coming. As you can see, it's just chaos. Has he had any painkillers? Painkiller? Morphine? Morphine? Okay, that's better than nothing. Okay. I first came across the story of the Scottish Women's Hospital in Roermond when I was travelling out to Syria to work as a doctor. Whenever I go to work in a conflict zone, I'm filled with some anxiety and trepidation. But when I learned about this place and the women that worked here, it was like meeting kindred spirits separated by a hundred years. And that's why it was so important for me to come here today to see it for myself. The Scottish Women's Hospital of the First World War was set up by doctor and suffragette Elsie Ingalls. Turned down somewhat dismissively by the British War Office, her idea of an all-female-run hospital to help the war effort was snapped up by the French. Roymond Abbey was to be the first and Dr Frances Ivans was put in charge. Over the course of the war, the organisation set up 15 similar units across Europe. Isn't it stunning? It's such a beautiful abbey. Imagine if you were a soldier and you'd been injured in a trench in the Western Front and that was your last memory and you were brought here unconscious for a few days and then you woke up to this, you would literally think that you had died and gone to heaven. When the hospital opened in January 1915, there were seven doctors, 10 nurses, seven orderlies, two cooks, a clerk, a maid, and two administrators, all women. There were even two female chauffeurs to drive the ambulances. This is the refectory. Just look at it, it's stunning. Those ceilings, I can just imagine that people were lying in here looking up at those ceilings. So this used to be the original place where staff from the hospital used to eat and drink. But it couldn't stay a refectory for long. Every square inch was needed for patients. As within two years, as the war intensified, the unit expanded into a crushingly busy 600-bed hospital. Its reputation for innovation and getting results had spread throughout France. During the summer months, the doctors would bring the patients out and line the beds all along the cloisters. They'd dress the wounds in gauze, soaked in saline, and then expose the wounds to the sunlight. And what I really love about this is that the doctors were seeing the patient as a whole. War medicine isn't only about operations and fighting infections. It's about a holistic approach. It's the top to toe therapy of the patient. And these women doctors were doing just that. When the women arrived in this hospital, they were an all-girl team and it meant that they had to lift and carry everything up to where they were going to have the wards. And that included heavy beds and heavy benches. And 
I want to see if us modern day girls can do it. Blimey. To begin with, they had about 100 beds to distribute and some of them were going to be on the fourth floor right at the top of this building where they first proposed to have the ward. Phew. So they must have been up and down all day carrying and lifting these beds. It's exhausting. If there was any doubt about whether these women were tough enough, well, they clearly were. I owe a huge amount to the women who worked out here in Roymont. They pushed the boundaries and they demonstrated that women doctors and nurses could work in the harshest environments in wartime. And it's thanks to them that women doctors like me can work across the board in medicine.